Hey guys, Adrian Racing here, back today with another video. Now this weekend just gone was the annual 24 hours of Le Mans. I watched some of it uh, as well as being at work and it was a pretty decent race to say so myself. But one of the uh, sort of highlights of the Le Mans weekend, excluded if you ignore the 24, you know, the, the main part of the race, was that Alpine done a demo run which included a Formula One car. This, I think this is the first time in history that a Formula One car has ever lapped the Circuit de la Sarre. And it looked pretty cool. I mean, obviously it was only a demo run that didn't go full speed, so no lap times were recorded. But that got me thinking that a couple of weeks ago it was announced that the Japanese Grand Prix would be cancelled for the current season. And it got me thinking, what if Formula One was to race at Le Mans? Big brain, I know. Now, of course, this would never actually happen in real life. One, the circuit just doesn't suit Formula One cars in any way, uh, shape or form. And two, it's not a grade one circuit, so it, they wouldn't, the FIA wouldn't allow it to happen. But luckily, in a simulator, I don't have to worry about the car either exploding due to uh, bumps and high speeds or the safety aspect, except maybe uh, my wheel deciding it wants to rip my wrists off every now and then. So I thought it would be a cool idea to head onto a set of Corsa, download the Circuit de la Sarre from Race Department, which isn't the best mod in the world, but it does a decent enough job for what we need it for today. Load up the Formula Hybrid 2021, so the current season of Formula 1, and see what would happen with a quick three-lap race against the AI here at Le Mans. So without further ado, let's jump onto the track and see what it would be like if Formula 1 raced at Le Mans. So just before we jump onto track quickly, just to let you guys know that I currently have a uh, referral code for the Majors Setup Shop uh, over on iRacing. So if you wish to um, purchase any setups from the Majors Garage, then hit the link below and uh, it will help me out as well as uh, letting you go in and get uh, some of the great Majors Garage setups that they have over there. Um, but chilling over, back to the video. All right, so here we are on the grid for my definite attempt one. Ignore any clip that you may have just seen in the intro to this video. And it's raised the revs and it is lights out. And away we go here at the Circuit de la Salle. Pretty decent launch actually. And straight away, we can use a little burst for hybrid and the DRS is open. Now, of course, we can use DRS anywhere we want on this track. The mod does no DRS zones because, well, nothing that races at Le Mans actually has DRS. So there are no official zones or activation points so we can use it wherever we want as the AI do too and now down the Dunlop S's for the first lap so much speed carrying through even on these C3 tires the uh, what would be the equivalent of the medium tires in real life now up to Tet Rouge oh who was that that was our fellow Alpine taking a dive bomb up the inside of Tet Rouge that's a bold bold move from him there and now onto the Molsan one for the first time. You can see my finger just glued to that hybrid button. We're getting a nice little run here on the Aston. Are we going to be quite close enough to think about a move? We're closer to DRS. We're in the slipstream. We pull out. But the Aston just has us on the brakes. Oh, we managed to hang around the outside maybe. Get a decent exit. Try not to do too much of that curb. It can really unsettle the car. And now onto the second part of the Molsan. Using about three or four more bars of boost, you can see it, the orange bar on the right hand side of the dashboard of the steering wheel. There's 340k, she's going a little off the boost now, you can see the speed. Staying where we are, who's going to be later on the brake from the Mercedes? We send it one up the inside, but the Mercedes gets us, but we get the switch back on the exit after we get off the throttle there. Because we get just that bit too much good of an exit, which is a little bit of the boost. There we go, now we've got to run on the Mercedes. As we head up the hill, you can just see the car bumpy. The track is so bumpy. This is just a, a public motorway when the race isn't on. The Mulsanne corner. Oh, big lock up on the front wheels there. Just didn't quite get off the, uh, the brakes hard enough. And now the long run up to Indianapolis over the crest. There's 310. There's 200 miles an hour. Ferrari and McLaren ahead of us. We're going to leave ourselves just a little bit of hybrid boost. We're going to take to the inside. We're actually three wide. It's Kevin Eshler style on the North Slifer. We take to the grass. And now into Indy. How much speed can we carry? Just going to close the DRS. And then... Oh, that was a bit too late on the brakes there. Just trying to see how much we could carry through. 
And now to Arnardo. Really bad at this corner as the uh, Ferrari there demonstrates. There's a little bit of boost just off the corner just to get us up to speed once again. We let the uh, V6 Turbo just pull us along. And now deep in the slipstream as we head into... Well, this is going to be a bit crazy, isn't it? The Porsche curves. What's it like in an F1 car? I mean, in LMP1s, even in LMP2s, and the PCEs, it's crazy the amount of speed that they carry through here. Down to sixth gear. Small lift for this right hander. Could probably be flat, but in the dirty air, yeah, we struggle a bit. And then through the Porsche curves, we made it. Definitely nowhere near the limit. Around the outside of the Ferrari. We've got the run. And now just the Porsche canes to go. Is the Ferrari going to come back at us? Yes, he does. We have to actually avoid turning in to avoid the collision. Through the final chicane to get a decent exit. And there is the first lap of this three lap race. And it's not actually too bad, to be honest. It's uh, The racing is actually going pretty well. Um, quite a lot of overtaking spots. Lots of uh, lots of long straights into uh, big chicanes, which uh, F1 like to put into uh, race tracks for uh, various reasons. As we uh, get a big wash of dirty air there, trying to turn in as the Ferrari cuts ahead in front of us. And now, so we can try and carry a bit more speed through Tetch Roof. There we go. Nicely done. And now back on the hybrid once again. But could I see this actually being somewhat successful if if F1 were to race at Le Mans in real life? Well, but there's sort of a couple of problems that I can see should F1 ever race at Le Mans in real life. One would be uh, it would have to be a daytime race. As much as uh, Le Mans at night is uh, a very, very uh, enjoyable thing, it, it wouldn't work just because the track's too dark and uh, there's not enough lighting for uh, that. But that aside, the main problem I can just see is the fact that the racing would be quite tentative because no one would want to be in front and it would all just be DRS passes, which, I mean, to be fair, is uh, basically all there is in F1 at the moment. But the, the main problem would just be the cars, I don't think would survive. This track is pretty bumpy, uh, the curves are pretty brutal, and as you can just see here, the run up to uh, Molsang Corner as we uh, possibly even get three overtakes. We've got the run of the Ferrari as well. We're going to hang it on the inside, nicely done. Oh, he tries to spin us out there, the, the cheeky boy. We have to get off the throttle, and I've uh, slightly overboosted this lap. We're going to have to get off the hybrid now and just let the the 800 or so horsepower from the uh, from the ICE takeover. Only 800. It's not. It's not that much. But yeah, I don't think the cars would just survive. Also, just the sheer amount that you're at full throttle and at max revs as well. The uh, while uh, modern F1 reliability is super super impressive, uh, it would just sort of it would ruin the engines for the races coming up after the mod. Um, should they put it in the calendar to replace Paul Ricard? I don't think it should replace Paul Ricard. Paul Ricard is, well, it was it's pretty terrible, not gonna lie. Okay, I just completely missed my turning point there. I was uh, thinking I was an LMP2 there in iRacing. Then I remembered that this uh, is a slightly different version track, so we'll, uh, we'll just ignore that that ever happened, yeah? I was about to demonstrate how much speed you can carry through the Porsche curves, but um, moving on, moving on. Uh, I don't think this should replace Paul Ricard. I mean, this year's race shows that good racing can happen uh, at, at uh, the French Grand Prix that we have at the moment. But uh, it would be cool to see an F1 car do a full, full chat lap of Le Mans. Uh, just curious to see also the lap times compared to... Uh, the current lap record leaders. I mean, the current lap record is a uh, 3:14.7, I think, set by uh, Kamu Kobayashi 2017 in the uh, Toyota during qualifying. The hypercars have definitely slowed down. I think they're about eight or nine seconds overall, and uh, raw pace slower than the LMP ones, uh, and with the different hybrid systems as well on the cars now, um, that makes the hypercars slightly different. But the F1 cars, I think, just wouldn't suit. And with them going to the uh, ground effect theme of uh, downforce from from next year, it would be a bit of a struggle, I think, 
with how bumpy it is around Ramon and how high the curbs are. There's such old school curbs around here. You can just see how much the cars uh, get unsettled by uh, hitting the curb there. The, the ground effect cars just wouldn't. They wouldn't survive. They wouldn't have the grip. They wouldn't have the downforce to race at Le Mans. That all being said, I wouldn't complain if it happened. But then at the same time, for F1 race to happen at Le Mans um, in real life, the circuit would have to be upgraded to uh, Grade 1 specification, which would mean bigger runoff areas, um, changes to the layout, different barriers, stuff like that, which would just ruin the the atmosphere of the track. There's a lot of uh, fan access at the moment, which would have to go as well. Um, and I think that it would be definitely just against the nature of the track to, to make it F1 friendly. But that being said, we've still got half a lap here to go. Let's see if we can try and catch up to the cars ahead. Try and gain some of the positions back that we've just lost. Uh, with my small instant off into the gravel at the Porsche curves, we're holding the hybrid ground. There's 350, there's 355. As we pull out of the stick stream, that's about 220 miles an hour. Breaking nice and late for Indianapolis. Carry so much speed through there. And now into our nod, how late we dare break. Big hit of the brakes. We've got the McLaren up ahead. Use a bit more hybrid on exit. We're going to leave the Ferrari in our dust. And now just how much speed can we carry through the Porsche curves, even with a bit of traffic up ahead? Should we try and take it flat? Why not? Let's see if the AI tries to do it as well. So close to DRS. Turn it in. Blend of the brakes. Blend of the throttle. Flat through the left hand. It easy. Flat through the second left hand. Actually, you can almost around the outside there of the McLaren. And now the AI is slow for this left hander. Yeah, we are. Oh, actually, a little bit of a rear wheel there for the McLaren. I think we're going to have to use just a little bit of boost. Here it's open. We've got the run. We're going to take to the inside. Maybe we can think about a move on the Red Bull as well. Not quite close enough. Also, you can go follow me on Twitch as well, where I stream iRacing. And I'm trying to uh, get into streaming other racing games as well. But all that's left me now to say is thank you very much for watching. Have a really awesome rest of your day. And... See you all next time. See you later, guys. Oh, there's the slipstream finger still glued to that hybrid button. Oh, the Mercedes. And that's why F1 wouldn't race at Le Mans.